This is a production of Cornell University. I'm Jane Petzl. I'm with the Larry Smarts Lab, and I'm here to show you some potato leaf hopper damage on Beagle and Bjorn varieties. Uh, so you can see the feeding of the potato leaf hopper damages the shoot tip and causes this is called a witch's broom, where the um, lateral shoots are starting to form because the apical shoot is very damaged. Uh, and this is Beagle. And this severely reduces yield. And here's some more damage on Bjorn. Same kind of thing going on. It causes chlorosis and necrosis of the leaves as well. This is our reverse leaf blower that we use to collect potato leaf hoppers from the field. And it has suction. And on the end, we have a bag that collects all of the potato leaf hoppers. So now that we have this, we've collected this big group of insects, I'm going to knock them out with some CO2. He is to put them to sleep. Given a choice, leaf hoppers are feeding on all three plants, or if they're only feeding on the susceptible varieties. In the choice feeding experiment, there were three different treatments. For the low and high potato leaf hopper treatments, I released 20 and 100 adult potato leaf hoppers, respectively, into each cage. After 24 days, I compared the relative growth rate of each treated willow genotype to a control that was not exposed to potato leaf hoppers. As you can see in this chart, when the potato leaf hoppers were allowed to feed freely on the three different willow genotypes within the cages, there were significant differences in their relative growth rates. The susceptibility of these willow genotypes to the potato leaf hoppers was consistent with what we have observed in the field, with Jor being most susceptible, 94006 most resistant, and Tully Champion falling somewhere in between. This type of feeding assay proves to be a helpful tool when trying to compare the resistance to potato leaf hoppers among willow cultivars under controlled conditions. But still I wondered whether the 94006 willows continued to grow well in the choice experiment simply because the leaf hoppers preferentially fed on other genotypes of willow and not on 94006, or whether they did feed on 94006 but is somehow resistant to the effects of feeding. 
To find the answer to this question, I also conducted a no-choice experiment in which 100 adult potato leaf hoppers were trapped inside of cages and forced to feed on shoots of resistant cultivars for 17 days. Again, I used Tully Champion 94006 and a third potato leaf hopper resistant cultivar called Preble. We've never observed potato leaf hopper damage on these cultivars in the field, so it was surprising to find that we saw potato leaf hopper damage and significantly reduced shoot growth under the no choice treatment conditions compared to a control that was not exposed to potato leaf hoppers. Based on these results, I concluded that for at least these willow cultivars, resistance to potato leaf hoppers is caused by the leaf hoppers preferentially feeding on certain types of willows and avoiding others. We don't know exactly which willow traits deter the potato leaf hoppers, but our breeding program continues to capitalize on these resistant traits in order to breed cultivars that can thrive under a wide variety of pest and environmental conditions. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.